Hello and welcome to another exciting Unreal Engine video tutorial. In this tutorial, you'll discover how to use a texture atlas and extract parts of it for your project. While this technique is commonly used for the UI, you can apply it in many other areas too. Before we dive in, let me give you a sneak peek at what's happening behind the scenes. We'll start by creating a main function and providing some coordinates as input. The first pair of inputs is the address coordinate of the element we want to extract, typically called UV. For simplicity, I'll refer to them as address X and address Y. The second pair of inputs will define the element's size, usually called UL and VL, but we'll call them size X and size Y for clarity. The last input we need is the texture size, to get the texture size, we'll create a custom node to read it automatically, so we don't have to input it manually each time. The main function's job is straightforward. It converts every input into values between 0 and 1. For example, if we have a 1024 by 1024 texture, pixel address 0 on each dimensions is 0, and pixel 1024 is 1. So, if you want to extract an element from address 512 on X and 512 on Y, it will automatically convert that to 0.5 by 0.5. The same calculation applies to the element's size. If the element size is 128 by 128 in a 1024 by 1024 texture, the converted value would be 0.125 by 0.125. It's super easy to implement. Let's start by creating a new folder for materials and then another for the function. Right-click and from the Material menu, create a new Material function. I'll call it MF Splitter. We need a few inputs for this function, as I mentioned earlier. First, we'll call this element address. The name is pretty self-explanatory. Change its type to vector2. Next, copy and paste this node to create a new input for element size. Finally, we'll add another one for the texture size. We need to break these vectors into X and Y components, so we can do the calculations individually. There's a node called Remap Value Range that handles all the math required to convert values to the 0 to 1 range I discussed earlier. To create a scalar value node, hold 1 on your keyboard and then left-click your mouse. The input low and target low are always zero, as all textures start from pixel zero, and the range we need also starts from zero. For the target high, we need that to be one. We have all the values to create the range, except for the input high. We can simply connect the texture size here. By using this node, we convert any value from the input that's between 0 and the texture size to the range of 0 to 1. Now, we need to apply the same math to the Y component. Just copy and paste the nodes and this time connect them to G, as R and G represent X and Y respectively. Once more, we need to convert the element size to the range of 0 and 1. Copy and paste all the nodes and this time connect them to the element size. Let me add comments to make this easier to understand. Now that we've converted the values, let's combine them to recreate the vectors we had before. You can create 2D vectors by using the append node, where A and B are the X and Y values of your vector. We're almost done. There's just one more step to complete this function. 
we need to apply these values to the texture coordinate. To scale any texture coordinate, you need to multiply the values. This scales our texture so that only the element we need is visible. To move or pan to the exact location of the element, we add the element address to the texture coordinate. And that's it. We're officially done with this function. Now let's create our master material. We need to include that function inside our master material. I'll change the material type to user interface and set the blend mode to translucent so we can use the opacity node to apply texture alpha. Hold one on your keyboard and then left click your mouse to create scalar values. Convert them to parameters and give them proper names so they are accessible outside of the material. For the size parameters, it's a good idea to give them some initial values. This time, I'll use the MakeFloat 2 node to create the 2D vector we need for the element size. Let me just add a comment for that. We can create two more scalar parameters for the element address, just like before. To find the texture size automatically, we need to create a custom node and write some commands. For the output, we need a vector2, D, or V2 for short, so let's change the output type to float2. For the input, we need a texture object, which I'll change to the atlas we want to use in a minute. Make sure to spell it correctly, otherwise it won't work. The code is super simple. We need to define a variable to store the texture dimensions, then call the getDimensions function on the texture object and pass our variable to it. Finally, we need to return that value. To see if this custom node works, we can use the debug node. Right click on it and start the preview. It seems something is off. Let me check the function again. Ah, we need to use float2 as the variable type. As you can see, this texture size is 128 by 128. Now, let's convert that to a parameter so we can change it outside of the material. We're almost done. However, if I connect the function result to the material output, you'll see it shows a gradient, not the texture we expect. This is because this node returns the UV calculations only, not the texture itself. Hold T on your keyboard and left click to add the texture sample node. Now, connect the function result to the UV input and the texture object to the text. Let me just tidy up the wiring and align these nodes for no reason. Now, we can connect this texture node to the material outputs. We can also connect the alpha channel to the opacity. I've imported some UI textures from another project of mine. As you can see, this material works perfectly and shows only the logo of my game from that atlas texture. Now, let's create a material instance from this master material and test it out more.
As you can see, all parameters are visible, and we can change them accordingly. For example, if I change the address, it shows another element from the texture atlas. To demonstrate the atlas variable, let me create a new material. For the gun icons in the game, I made another atlas. I think the address of the Uzi in that atlas is 872 for the X and 768 for the Y. The size isn't quite right. I believe X is 436 and Y is 256. To preview it correctly, we can set the element size in the preview size as well. There are some important settings that I recommend applying to your texture. Change the texture group to UI, set the compression settings to user interface 2D, and change the tiling methods to clamp. There is also another method I want to share. Some elements, especially icons, are single color, and you can map them into a single texture file like this. I'll leave this material for colored elements, and I'll create another master material by duplicating this one. All you need to do is add one node. Right-click and search for Static Component Mask Parameter. Give it a name and connect it to the RGB of the texture sample if you don't want to use the alpha channel. If you do want to use the alpha channel, connect it to RGBA. Then, connect the material output to the mask node. Now, if I change the default texture to the packed atlas, you'll see it only reads the red channel by default. Let me show you that on the texture as well. Each channel contains different elements, and I didn't use the alpha channel to keep the texture size low. You can apply colors inside the material, but I suggest applying color directly in the widget for better control over different conditions. Let me quickly demonstrate that by creating a widget, Add an image to your widget, and then create a material instance from this master material. From the brush menu, select the material instance you want to use, set its size, and from the tint menu to change its color. The mask node helps you switch between different channels of your texture. Now, let's use an element from another channel. Open the material instance, change the channel, and give it a few seconds to switch inside the material. Address X looks good, but I want to change address Y to 128, with sizes set to 128 by 128. Let me also adjust the preview size. As you can see, we've perfectly switched to another icon. Lastly, remember that for the channel method to work, your texture must be in Targa, or TGA format. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Your support helps me grow and bring more content to you.